Do you think there's such thing as objective truth? Oh boy. Oh, you gotta give me a second thing about yeah. this one. I do think about dropping out quite frequently. <laughs> Thank you. Know. These are good questions. Thought this would be kind of like a joke. Yeah. And today I wanted to ask Harvard students, best and smartest students around the world, three types of questions. What true intelligence is, philosophical questions, and then also maybe a couple controversial questions that they may not learn about or a lot of talk about. And we'll see what they have to say. I'm a neuroscience major. What are you doing talking to me? You need to be studying right now. Um, I actually... What have you guys learned the most so far, whether it be in or out of the classroom? Can it be negative? Speak your truth. It's a very competitive environment, but mostly just because people are insecure and are not used to being like the, the best of the best anymore. Harvard as an institution kind of blows. Because they're Harvard, they can get away with just like not listening to their students. People are freaking amazing. Classmates with the granddaughter of Roosevelt. Someone has discovered a solar system. Here, everyone's got a story to tell. So I have like four independent different friends from Montana, which is kind of crazy. I had never met a person from Montana before coming here. <laughs> What's your story then? Uh, I'm just a guy. To get through Harvard, you have to be like kind of f***ed up. Do you feel like you're f***ed in the head then? I do. Definitely a little f***ed in the head. It's interesting because almost all the experiences were outside the class, which made me curious on what exactly Harvard as an institution was doing. Because the best education isn't what to think, but how to think. So does Harvard encourage critical thinking and expose students to diversity of thought, or do they censor students from certain viewpoints? You know, as much as an Ivy League university can, I close mindedness, especially politically. In general, conservatives are not particularly welcomed. A lot of liberal arts colleges expound this idea of diversity of thought, but when it's restricting certain voices, is it really fulfilling that mission? Harvard has 4% conservative faculty. Really? I think it does a good job of promoting critical thought. I'm not sure about open-mindedness and diversity of thought because it's a really liberal place. Not necessarily a bad thing, but I, I do think it's kind of detrimental to the educational environment. A liberal opinion is overrepresented at Harvard, but I wouldn't say that's because of the institution. I think that's mostly because of the types of students that Harvard attracts. It's growing up in Texas, the stereotype of Red America is that it's closed-minded, which is true. But I came here, it's the same damn thing, just in the other direction. I feel like I've heard on the media outlets that a lot, a lot of Ivy League students censor posing beliefs. Has that been true? And the media outlets who really harp on that kind of blow that out of proportion. Pose like the minority is the loudest in that case. Right. If you say something that I disagree with, I'm not gonna try to like censor you or- <laughs> Cancel me. Yeah, or cancel you. <laughs> I think the worst thing colleges can do is shield students from certain viewpoints. For me, I've learned the most talking to people that I disagree with. Because if you actually listen, only good can happen. You can either form better arguments or actually find merit in what they're saying. Look, I get it. Conversation isn't always productive, but done right, and it's easily the best way to expand your perspectives and intelligence. Point is, censorship ain't never the answer. Whoa, big question. How would you define true intelligence? I am not intelligent enough to tell you what intelligence <laughs> means. Hopefully, you should be a politician. It's an ability to interact with anyone. Realizing that you will never know everything. It's open-mindedness in a way. Yeah. How smart you are without having to try too hard. Well, how would you define that smartness, though? Knowledge. I think it's much more of an attitude, an intellectual pursuit, more so than just some natural ability that people will have. And essentially, curiosity. Intelligence can be a bit of a, a rat race. True intelligence here is a little bit more than that, a little bit more the way you treat people as well. What do you think is more important for success? Street smarts or book smarts? You can know all the chemistry you want. I feel like if you're more street smart, then even if you aren't the most book smart person in the world, you'll be able to get your ideas out there more. And that way, you'll be able to make more of an impact in the world. Anyone who who has all of one and none of the other probably is not going to be super successful. Because depending on the situation, the value of what you know can vary. But if you know how to think, you'll be fine in any situation. And that's true intelligence. Okay, you don't have to agree with me, but what you can't deny is that these people aren't your average college students. And it made me think, even though they might become the next Zuckerberg, right now they're college students. That means that these nerds still party. What are like drunken conversations like here at Harvard? People talk about like the theories of the world and the way that humanity functions, so many different opinions and outlooks on things that you wouldn't get in a normal environment, which I think is like really cool. Last night we were like drunk in an Uber home and we were singing Phineas and Ferb. It really goes both. <laughs> Ways. Are you guys hung over? Yeah. <laughs> Talking to these students gave me hope for the future because my drunk ass conversation in college was telling all the homies about that cute girl in English class with a fat ol. Anyways, let's make things interesting and really test their intelligence. Do you think there's such thing as objective truth? Oh boy. In terms of like science maybe, but even now like science changes continuously and we're constantly making new discoveries. I think there is. I don't think that we can access it though. Objectivity is not something the human mind can achieve. Everyone's idea of truth is shaped by our realities. I'll just challenge that. Okay. Let's say for example, Hitler. Obviously I think like what he did is extremely wrong, mm -hmm. but don't you think in his view he thought what he was doing was truth and good? No, I, okay. I think 
Clearly that wasn't right. To me and you both, but to him and... No, I think we can agree that was an objective truth. <laughs> Most things I would say are not objectively true. Even if you had an opinion that was so stupid that like literally all of humanity would reject it, you still can't say that's objectively true or objectively false because you could imagine somebody who rejects it. A lot of how to think involves constantly questioning your truth. And that willingness to be open to new ideas is an underrated part of true intelligence. And the best part is you don't need to have a college degree to think this way. I'm obviously not the first to ask Harvard students, but none of the videos that I've seen yet have really put the students to the test. So for the final round, let's take it up a notch and see how they handle a controversial topic. What do you think is more important, true representation or merit? Oh wow, that's really tough. Uh, maybe merit. I'm being very broad, but if something's represented very well, it doesn't have the capabilities of doing something, then what is it worth? Representation means nothing at that point. I don't think people should like bring people of all backgrounds just to promote diversity for the sake of having diversity. If you just had a bunch of the most deserving people, they all probably got this merit in the same way and solve a lot of problems when you think about things differently and bring in new ideas of how to do it. Merit in general is such a non-objective term. It's far more important to focus on something which is a bit more objective, which is true representation. I think in the vast majority of cases, merit comes as well. I think that's a false dichotomy. I don't think you can really pit those against one another. As a foundation, merit is perhaps the most important. And at the same time, there's immense value to diversity. I think it makes us better people when we're around others who disagree with us. That the ways that we traditionally measure merit miss a lot of things. Affirmative action, while maybe not the complete answer, is, is a step in the right direction to addressing that. Do you think it's even possible to find that perfect balance? I don't think there is, no. I don't know if it's 100% possible, but that doesn't mean we can strive toward it. It's probably really hard to find true merit, and I think representation is important, so it's probably a hybrid between the two. I guess truth always kind of lies in the middle, right? Yeah. Not only is this question relevant in the context of college admissions, but the answers can also reveal a person's ability to entertain different thoughts. Because although it can help, today what's important isn't if or where you got that expensive piece of paper. It's more of who you know, how you think, and can you change? Do you think college is worth it? Absolutely. Especially here. You know, I have to think about that. College is worth it as long as financially it makes sense. Harvard's unique in that it has such robust financial aid that it really is affordable for everyone. You look at the statistics of people that are here. I took a gap year last year and I had like an existential crisis of like, why am I going to get educated when I could be doing other things? I do think about dropping out quite frequently, but I do think it's worth it to leave an impact. I really do need a college degree. To college is worth it, but not in the traditional sense where, oh, you're learning a lot. It's really about the networking and Harvard has the like highest percentage of international students. So you're walking around you mean cool kids from all over the world hearing about everyone's background and it's really enlightening so about a year ago one of the deans of my alma mater reached out to me asking for my experiences of my time there and so i told him straight up the classes didn't learn anything and don't really use it. But the real value was the actual conversation that I had with my professors and classmates and hearing about their real world experiences. He said, thanks, I appreciate hearing from you, blah, blah. But something tells me that didn't end up in the college brochure. The most intelligent people never stop learning and a degree, even from Harvard, doesn't prove your intelligence. Continuous learning is a never ending process to get closer to this elusive truth. And to get started, it all starts with just asking.